good day. Here are the stories for the Manila Times for Saturday, May 22, 2021. Frontline employees in the business processing outsourcing industry and election personnel are among the sectors added to the groups prioritized for COVID-19 vaccination. Palace spokesman Harry Rocket Jr. said that during its meeting the previous day, the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases approved the addition of the new sectors on the recommendation of the Technical Working Group of the Interim National Immunization Technical Advisory Group. Roque said frontline BPO employees and personnel of the Commission on Elections were inserted in Priority Group A4. More shipments of the Russian-made Sputnik V vaccine will be arriving before the month ends, the Russian ambassador to the Philippines has assured. Ambassador Marat Pavlov said during the Manila Times Roundtable on Friday, the shipments are part of the agreement between Russian President Vladimir Putin and President Rodrigo Duterte made during a phone call last April. Putin had promised the Philippine government 20 million Sputnik V doses before the end of the year. A COVID-19 vaccine pass given to individuals who have received the required two doses can help revive domestic tourism, Presidential Advisor for Entrepreneurship Jose Maria Joey Concepcion III said on Friday. Concepcion pushed anew for the issuance of a proof of vaccination card to help the nation recover faster from the effects of the pandemic. He said some local business leaders have rallied behind the proposal. U.S. President Joe Biden signed a hate crimes law on Thursday or Friday in Manila aimed at protecting Asian Americans who have suffered the surge in attacks during the COVID-19 pandemic. Racism, Biden told Asian American politicians and senior members of Congress in a packed room in the White House, is an ugly poison that has long plagued our nation. Reeling off a list of violent incidents which took place against a backdrop of anti-Chinese sentiment linked to the pandemic, Biden said the Asian American community had been made a scapegoat. The departure of 400 Filipino caregivers to Israel remained on hold despite the ceasefire between the Israeli forces and the militant group Hamas. The ceasefire put a temporary halt to 11 days of conflict that left hundreds of fatalities and widespread destruction in the Gaza Strip. The number of suspicious transactions or those involving alleged money laundering increased by more than 60% in 2020, a report released by the Anti-Money Laundering Council showed. The STR Quality Review Report said, Suspicious transaction reports last year surged to 1.01 million, up by 63% from the 623,000 in 2019. The government has allowed religious gatherings in Metro Manila and in nearby provinces to up to 30% of the venue capacity until May 31. Palace spokesman Harry Rocket Jr. said on Friday that the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases made the decision after meeting with the Metro Manila Council on Thursday. The IATF EID allows religious gatherings to up to 10% of the venue capacity in Metro Manila and in other areas under GCQ with heightened restrictions. Over to business, financial stability authorities in the region recently met to discuss the challenges and recovery efforts amid the pandemic, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas said. In a statement on Friday, the BSP said Central Bank Governor Benjamin Diokno recently co-chaired the Regional Consultative Group for Asia Virtual Meeting of the Financial Stability Board. 17 Asian jurisdictions participated in the meeting and were joined by the FSP Secretariat based in Basel, Switzerland. Topping sports, Filipino athletes and officials participating in the upcoming Tokyo Olympics and the Southeast Asian Games in Hanoi, Vietnam have moved up on the government's COVID-19 vaccine priority list, Malacanang announced on Friday. Palace spokesman Harry Rocket Jr. said the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases in a meeting on Thursday allowed athletes bound for Tokyo and Hanoi to commence with their bubble-type training. Roque said the bubble-type training of athletes participating in the two major competitions was subject to the applicable guidelines of the Philippine Sports Commission, the Games and Amusement Board, and the Department of Health. Antonio Contreras and Dian Macabenta are today's front-page columnists. Contreras talks about the innocent victims of war in the conflict between Israel and Palestine, while Macabenta discusses the Philippines in the Paris Climate Agreement. Today's editorial believes the brand agnostic policy of the Department of Health is one of the better decisions of the agency. Read the full version on the paper's opinion section or listen to the voice of the Times. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to its digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, and keep up with the Times. With the Fort Bilaseran, this is Arik John C. Co. reporting. May have a safe weekend ahead.